Hey coders and welcome to episode 7 of our script service playlist on the Google Apps Script course. In this video we're going to be talking about web app triggers. So I'm not going to go into all the complexities and intricacies of a web app. That deserves a whole other playlist which we'll make in the future. What I am going to do in this video is highlight the do get and do post methods and these are the triggers which help your web app to run. So these are technically simple triggers, however they can be run on both a bounded script and a standalone script and most of the times I believe they are run on a standalone script as long as you publish your script as a web app. These can be run just like simple triggers. Again they take in an event parameter E and you can get a lot of information from this E. So let's now look into the code and see what these things can do. If you're new to making web apps or you're not so familiar with protocols such as HTTP, a lot of what I'm going to be saying over these next couple minutes may seem quite foreign to you. However, my suggestion would just be to push through it for now and don't worry because we'll be making a web app playlist later on in this course and we're going to go over a lot of the technical jargon and a lot of the, over the protocols and processes that make web apps over the internet work. So for now, let's just showcase do get and do post. So again, these are simple triggers and they are named after the, um, the HTTP protocol methods get and post. So whenever a user makes a get request to your web app, this function is triggered to fire, and whenever a user makes a post request to your web app, this function is triggered to fire. Google has not provided the other verbs such as put or delete, it's just get and post, but that's all right because a lot of what we'll be doing um, just involves get requests and post requests. So to make a web app, again, you just need one of these functions. Either one will work or you can include both. That's fine by, that's fine by Google. So um, let's showcase do get first. So do get is, is again, a method that will, fun that will fire automatically whenever a user makes a get request to your web app. So right now we have a HTML file right here is all written out. Well, again, we're going to go over a lot of this in a later episode, but we're going to be creating a template from file first because we are including these things called scriptlets. And when you include these things called scriptlets, now you have an HTML template, not an output yet. So this is just a way to inject JavaScript right into your HTML. And then after we have that template, we'll evaluate it and that will give us our HTML output, as you can see right here. Great, and then secondly, we have our post method, or our do post function right here, and that is going to be called whenever we make a post request. So uh, right now we have a form in our HTML, and the method is specified to post, so that whenever a user submits that, that form, uh, the HTTP method is going to be now post. So let's, actually, let's look at our web app, and this might, be a little bit more clear when we uh, see it in front of our eyes. So to make a web app, you need to go to publish and then deploy as web app. You'll be presented with this pop-up right here. I've already deployed my web app, but if it's your first time, you can go into, you can hit this button, it'll look, it'll say deploy, and, and then that'll be uh, deployed instantly. So for right now, I'm actually going to get my, um, my URL and this is the production URL, and you can tell because it ends in an exec. If you want your just your development URL though, you can click on this latest code right here. So that's what I'm going to do for now. And then it's going to send that URL, it's going to send the development URL into the URL box. And then what, what that basically means is we're making a get request. So again, remember, Whenever you type something into this URL box, it's going to default to a get request, and then and then the server will just just uh, send whatever code from that get request that it's requesting, and then so we're returning the HTML, and the HTML then is going to pop up in our browser and it's going to render in our browser, and then we get this output right here, which is exactly this HTML file. So again, it's the form, and then as we can see, here's our form right here. So again, if you remember, we have this form set up to make a post request. So if we input data, say, like David the Weiss, and if we give it a password, 
password, one, two, three, for now. Then as soon as I hit the submit button, it's going to pass data into my, into my script right here, but it's not going to pass in data via the URL. So before with get requests, all the data is contained within the URL. With post requests, they made this request um, available because a lot of the time, a lot of times you may want to send data that's somewhat sensitive. So in this case, we have a password here. We don't want to put the password straight up in the URL because it's sensitive data. So we're going to make a post request and then this function is going to fire the do post and then we are going to capture that data through this event parameter. So we're going to just return that data to the screen. Um, again, you probably wouldn't do this in a real life scenario because again, you have sensitive data, but just to show that we have indeed make a, made a post request, we're going to display that data right back on the screen. Some other things you could do with post requests are say like authenticate, say if this was actually a username and password login screen, you would want to authenticate that these were in fact a registered user, or you could store data in a database, things like that. Those are more real life use cases, but for now, we're going to just display it right back onto the screen. So to get our data, we're going to say e.postData, and then we're gonna get the contents. The contents are going to display as a query string. You can always reformat it into JSON if you'd like, but again, for simplicity, let's just keep it as a query string. So let's go back into here and we'll hit submit and then that will make our post request. And there we go, here's our data back displayed on the screen. And um, so yeah, it was sent to this do post method. We can do whatever we want to, but we're just displaying it back on the screen. And if you can see, there is zero data, zero sensitive data in our URL or anything like that. Great, so guys, I know that may have been confusing at times, but don't worry, we're going to dive a lot deeper into this into our web app playlist. But for now, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.